Hello and welcome back to another episode of Shapeless Skyrim. My name is Tori Sick Boy Thompson. My name is Tyler. Today, at the top of the episode, we just want to get out right away. Hey, if you like this show, why don't you check out our podcast? It goes up on mm-hmm. Friday. Anywhere you listen to podcast, it's called Baseless Claims. Try it. You will like it. You'll Anywho, love it. We're here for mod number one, which isn't a suggested mod. We found this one on our own. So. Yeah, don't take credit for it, you grubby little pigs. Yeah, you sloppy little pigs. This is ours, not yours. And our first mod of the day is called Nightshade Estate Vampire Home. And boy, is it gothic. It's got a very gothic look. So right off the bat, if you didn't guess it already, we are in the city of Morthal, which is just perfect for a vampire player home. And it's also perfect to start off our uh, our episode today, which is some slightly uh, fantastic player homes, some some otherworldly types. Hold on. I got mm-hmm. it. Okay. Fantastic player homes and where to find them. Oh my God, Tyler. That's a, that's the best title we've ever come up with. My God, this is a hot topic kid's dream house right yeah, here. This it really is, is. It's got just the right amount of edge to it. It's, it's perfectly edgy. I could absolutely see that gargoyle on a t-shirt. I, you mm-hmm. know, put some checkered belt on with that. Some mm-hmm. low vans. My God. Yeah, or you're going to be big ready for- you're going to be ready for the My Chemical Romance concert. Let's get inside. Oof. This is dark in here, T. This is quite, quite Yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to boost here. that brightness a little bit. Is it is it tough to see on your uh, your little share screen there? Uh, it's not that bad. I see it normally as you would, but it is okay. very dark. And yeah, it is, uh, not a lot of uh, which I mean Hey, ideal for a vampire home. That's true. I did I did for a second forget that this is for vampires, but I guess light is kind of their enemy as it is for pale redheads. So really, it's kind of like a, a wait. Is that a 1 to 1 ratio like vampires gingers same thing? If that's what you need to make the audience laugh, Tyler, then I will I'll jump in front of that bullet. Hey, you started you started it. No, I'm Tyler, asking, you is can that a one-to-one? One? You can kill your best friend, right, uh, live on camera so that other people look at you and go, ha, that boy's so funny. <laughs> Tori, how do you feel about garlic? Love it. Well, let me ask you, how do you feel about this vampire player home? I dig it. The brick interior is a very nice touch to it. You know, like, get rid of that, like, standard player home, like, bright wall. Make it that, like, dark brick wall. It looks phenomenal yeah it's uninviting but in a way that like the more we spend time in it the more i'm kind of down with it i feel like a small victorian child was murdered in this house oh for sure like just a a small sickly boy yeah yeah something went awry in this house and i like that the vampire player home is it's just dark like the interiors are fitting everything is dark it's got that brick cold feel but mm-hmm. it's not like, you know, the the vampire player homes we've seen before where it's like there's blood on the wall and there's yeah. dead bodies yeah. everywhere. Like, it's it's a home still. Yes. But there is one thing, I mean, because some people might be watching this going, all right, well, it's dark. That doesn't inherently make it for vampires. But if you go into this kitchen room, this is what makes it fit for a vampire. Let's go down there. Now, this is what makes it fit for a vampire. This is a... Uh, oh. This, when, when you go near your little beast form, this is where you're going to want to visit. Okay, so now it's where we get the dead bodies, the blood, the more ritualistic stuff. So it right. does have that, but in the main level house, it can just be a nice, you know, Victorian home for that right. might be haunted by the soul of a young Victorian that boy. Might have, that murdered. might have a young small boy who was killed real good right up in it. But yeah, oh, this yeah. It, you're gonna have. Hold on, let me get candlelight. Magic. Mm, I don't know. I don't know how vampires feel about light, though, Tori. Yeah, well, this is for us. If we were a vampire, Jan still he's not sure if he wants to commit to it or not. It's kind of a big commitment, yeah. but you know, mm-hmm. he's just exploring the area and kind of seeing what's up there. So you got plenty of these coffins that you can stand up and get a good night's sleep in. You think Jan is testing it out by just getting a Hot Topics reward card just to kind of see what his options are? Yeah, because if he's going to end up going with it, he's definitely going to want to have a rewards card and be able to get some exclusive perks and maybe like 15% off, all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey, th- 
There's some sit-down ones, too. If you do want to sleep, you know, laying down, as as most do, there's also some options for you. This Man, this home really has everything. Oh, and look at that. You got human blood on tap. Tyler, what's more vampiric than that? Big cloaks. That's true. I think these work perfectly in tandem with each other of, like, the main level and then the basement cave because maybe you're still, like, keeping it secret from, like, the townsfolk, but you want to, you know, you still want that dark gothic place to live, but right. you don't necessarily want to tell everyone, like, the postman when he comes to your house, like, sure. oh, hey, I kill people. Looking through the mail slot, he's like, is that a dead person hanging with their blood dripping out? What the fuck? No, don't look <laughs> at that. Look yeah, away. <laughs> Do you have my copy of Sports Illustrated? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Well, I really uh, like it. It's uh, <laughs> I, re I read it for the interviews. <laughs> Not for jerking off. Well, Tyler, it appears that if we spend too much time out here, we're at a greater risk of being caught for our, our vampiric desires. Uh, what do you say we head on to the next fantastical house of the day? I would love nothing more than that because if we stay around here, I'm going to be stuck in the Count Chocula voice and none of yeah. us want that. I don't want that. You don't want that. The audience doesn't want that. So please, Tori, get, get to the exit. Tyler, we start mod number two just outside of Whiterun and it's this big tree. It is a very big tree. Specifically, it's Gray's Tree Home. Tree Home is two words. If you try typing it into Bethesda net with one word, you're never going to find it because it's a garbage site. Oh, well, that's good, good to know. It's a very garbage site. You got to put the space in guaranteed. And my goodness, what a, what a beautiful looking tree. I love all the big lanterns on it. Yeah. And I can it, see that they're not exactly connecting, but I almost don't care because of how outside of this world like it feels it's, magical so i'm kind of like yeah, yeah it's floating lanterns like there's also a man in the tree what do you expect it's a it's another fantastical home and this is where you find it and it is specifically in lore like if you need a lore reason the deed was passed down through hundreds of years it was a magical seed that was thrown in that pond and mm -hmm. it grew and your family owns it so now you have the deed and you can just walk right into this player home and my goodness, if you've ever... This isn't just like a tree house, okay? This is no. a legit, like, hey, this is a house built inside of a magical tree. Uh, you know what? A more contained interior than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it's... it It's, it's kind of got that tree Oof. house feel just in terms of it's one space. Mm -hmm. And that, I love that stupid goat. Yeah, stupid goat. I was like, oh, okay, you're just going to go ahead and belittle that creature, huh? I guess so. Yeah, and that goat will fight and protect you and cannot die. So Really? Oh, that's the, fantastic. The goat cannot die. He lives inside, can follow you, talk to you, fight alongside you, and he cannot die, winky face. I don't like that it's a winky face. It's some sort of maybe immortal goat lord, or maybe uh, maybe it's a dramora that was put into the body of a goat. Sure, maybe just a spell gone awry. You know, we could we could guess all day, but all we know is that we got stupid goat, and he loves us. We love him too. So yeah, yeah it's got true. all of your necessities, like your crafting. It's got a staff enchanter, the forge. This seems like extremely just just for a workflow purpose. Like, all right, let me get all my hot metal and stuff down here. Okay, then let me just quickly just run it up here. Okay, and then I'll just do some hammering right there and then bring it back down. Yeah, yeah, definitely not like a fantasy factory layout. Like, Yeah, it doesn't got that... Uh, that Rob Deerdeck stank on thank it. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> the Deerdeck stank. No, I knew what stank, you were trying to pull. Patented, <laughs> oof. The, the Deerdeck stank on it. No, it is it is definitely otherworldly. It is definitely magical. Like it's got all of that like really like dramatic lighting in here. Yeah. Very it's like got I the like gamer RGBs, which I'm a fan of, to be honest. Yeah, I'm a fan of the gamer RGBs. Am I a fan of the setup though? Not really. Yeah, the layout could use some fine tuning. Because I feel like you could do a lot with it. Like, the exterior is so nice, and it makes you believe it's this grand magical thing. But then once you hop inside, it's kind of like, it's just a platform. Yeah. 
Yeah, I could go I, for a little bit more, even if it was like, and put another uh, sort of like walkway along here or like right, you know, along like right here. Just make it like a full loop, and then you could have, you know, just some more stuff, maybe like some mannequins or you know better layout for the smithing equipment it's just it's it's mm. really just like the day-to-day -day utility of the layout is not quite up to snuff for me no no osha would have a fucking field day in here yeah well osha can't go into private homes and be like nope but sure i, I get i get the sentiment i think because it's a magical tree maybe you can get away with like making it a little bigger and like mm -hmm. putting some other magical stuff in it like yeah it's pretty magical but i think it can get even more otherworldly like you go in the tree and it can be bigger i'm not gonna be measuring the walls like oh 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 oh, oh. the tree was a little bit smaller on the outside <laughs> yeah i say go buck wild go buck wild but overall conceptually lighting uh i i do really enjoy the concept and i love that there's a lore friendly reason for it so hey if you're playing as a wood elf this is a it's a great home for you Great placement, great otherworldly feel. And Tori, I know you were about to bring us into mod number three, so I yep. will. Uh, uh, I yield my time. Uh, Tori, you may uh, move into the uh, mod number three segment. I forgot what I was going to say, Tyler. You, my sick you brain. May, you may do a transition if you'd like. Oh, okay. Um, you know what I love more than this house? Ending the show, and we can only do that after the next mod, so let's go. Tyler, welcome to mod number three. And mod number three is interesting because you can start from anywhere to get mm -hmm. nowhere. Before I drop the mod name, it is recommended by Gunther Lol over on our Discord, and it mm -hmm. was also recommended by HD2K over on our Discord. Well, I would have said that, except HD didn't send it until we were already filming it, so I don't Ooh. think that one counts, bud. Yeah, that doesn't count. You, you'll get the mention, but your name ain't not going in that title. Not a chance, pal. Yeah, not a chance your name's getting in that title. And to get to mod number three, which is called Edge of Nowhere, you start by equipping a wooden mask that you get in Labyrinthia. Labyrinthian, yes. that's the one. Or you can cheat and get it, but you just go ahead and equip that bad boy. And oh no, boom, and here we are. You are transported to a room with a black book, and then you will be taken to the edge of nowhere. All right, let's follow the book. And here we are at the edge of nowhere. Now, I know what you're wondering is, do I have to leave this mask on to stay in here? The answer is no. You can unequip it once you are in the edge of nowhere once you're in this world space you can unequip it and you'll see that there are different exits that you can take to any of the capitals in skyrim now once you're in here this is sort of like the the entrance and you'll see that it's kind of broken up into sectors so you walk across the bridge and there's really not a whole lot outside of sites that you can do here but you walk up here and you can follow this book to the palace of the forgotten king Honestly, all of those books keep it very thematic with Apocrypha because if you'll remember, when you're going through Apocrypha, you have to go through so many book loading screens. Like everywhere, you're just jumping book to book to book. Right. So it fits really well with that style and it gives everything a, a more seemingly like grand entrance. Yeah, just having walls of like stacked books and scrolls and flying books and pages and stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a very unique and very cool design especially if you're really into the apocrypha edgy dark look yeah we did get a little bit macabre again we did with this mod but i think it's a it's a grander version of that like it's a more magical version of that like yeah i think oh, in a big way because it's it is so otherworldly yeah. so who's this lost echo person i'm seeing right yeah. now who's making some delicious turnovers yeah, these are these are new merchants that you can find in this world space here. Yes. So these ghostly people are three new merchants. Well, I couldn't talk to her, so that yes. might be a huh? bit of yes. an issue, but we'll, go, we'll, we'll see if we find any other lost echoes. Oh, and hey, if you were curious, can you bring Stupid Goat with you? You sure can. You sure can, along with any other followers, but why would you want a different follower? You have Stupid oh. Goat. We got Stupid Goat. Okay, so who do we got here? The Lost Maiden. 
This is the Lost Maiden, and Ooh. this is a follower that you can take with you. All right, well, I'll get another one. Oh, that's a sure, just rack That's them a up. cool throne right there. Yeah, honestly, like Will Jossum, Neon Eye. Mm -hmm. Great job. Yeah. You, you, you crush the aesthetic every time. You really, you really make do. a good feel. You make me feel good, and I love that. I'm going to open the Lost Armory. Oh, whoa. That's a cool layout. It is a cool layout where they're all kind of staring up at this glowing pillar of tentacles, which is not a sentence I enjoyed saying. No, no. I didn't like when you said it. <laughs> no, but it kind of I hurt. like the way it looks. Can you interact with the stuff on the wall? Sure can. Yeah. That's all, nice. that's all stuff that you can claim as your own if you'd like. Can't interact with those. Those are just cool lights. But yeah, we got all kinds of weapon racks and stuff here too. Very nice. If you wanted an apocrypha themed house, this is it. This is kind of it. it. It's kind of your only option, pal. Now we're back to the main area, so let's find like another, another route. All right, we'll continue on to. Is this? Weren't we already at the Palace of the Forgotten King? Oh, yeah, well. but I'm sure it's just a continuation of it. Ooh. Okay, now we're bringing in some moving parts. Nicely done. Yeah, Nicely that is done. interesting. That looks so threatening and cool. I it love really that. It really does. Is this a bed? Pages of rest. Oh, that's pretty sick. That's cool. That's seems really highly cool. uncomfortable. Very the. That's not a sleep number right there. That's a. No. That's that's Absolutely purely for not. the edgy look while you're wearing your oversized Osiris shoes and My Chemical Romance T-shirt. Mm -hmm. This is another hot topic house, as we like to call it. Oh, Ooh, this disgusting is... bath. Oh, that's a that's a disgusting bath. Yeah, it looks like the it looks like the weird little metal gel you have to jump into for that Mario sixty four level. Oh, I was gonna say the weird metal gel from the Matrix, but that also works. Or the weird, yeah, that's where they got the inspiration. They took it from Mario. They were big fans. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I mean, who isn't? Yeah, the Wachowskis or whatever their name were like. God, that that plumber is something else. I'll tell you what. God love the way he moves i don't yes. love the way this guy moves but let's talk to him there we go okay Take so now he is able to sell me all sorts of his goodies so there you go they do work just all that right. first one was having an issue for us and obviously this more of like armory so that person had like that echo had armors and weapons and crafting mm -hmm. materials they were selling way to create an ambiance yeah for real God, this is a this is a big mood. This whole house. I just love the spinning pages and stuff. That looks so rad. And then I would imagine that these are going to be the merchants of magical spells and and all sorts of potions for you. Yep. Yep. That's all your magic Some... stuff. Perfect. And, and then I'm gonna guess that's potions. Selling. Potions and ingredients. So yeah. Yep. You kind of got all your main categories covered here. Like, if you need, like, a saw or something, that's not... You're not going to find that in this. But, I mean, hey, everything else, yeah. you're covered. I think more mods should add an Ace Hardware. Yeah, it bothers me, the lack of Ace Hardwares that are available within Skyrim. But Oh, okay, so we just moved upstairs. That's kind of Yeah, I didn't nifty. notice that before. But, yeah, we are just in the upper level, which is cool. That's very nifty. I like that. So where does the other book lead us? Let's go find out. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, Tyler, this is I'm this is gonna make me very sick. Oh no. Oh boy. This I is can't a, Oh my this is, god. This is like one of those house of mirrors that is never fun. Okay, it's this is genuinely nauseating. this is genuinely making me like a little bit nauseous. Um Okay, so it looks and you'll like we see, these books are the here exits. that bring you Yep, yep, to all the bars of the different Oh my god, Tyler, this is this is legitimately making me nauseous. I'm gonna try and keep speed with them. Yeah, there we go. It's not, help. It's, it's not helping all that much, though. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, for, yeah, so, so this as, is going to have all the all the different exit points for you. I think this is your only exit that you can take. Because if you take off the mask, it's not going to transport you out. So you just gotta uh, you just got to come up here. And if yes, you're... That, is, that is kind of true. You can go back to the very beginning and go back to the room with the, in Labyrinthian where the Black Book initially took you to this house. And if you take off the wooden mask then it will transport you back to Skyrim. Yep, but once you're in the edge of nowhere, then you're kind of locked in. And yeah. you got to go to this fun house to get out. 
and it's I don't think it's very fun. Do I think it's cool? Absolutely. Do I yeah, think for it's sure. otherworldly? For sure. Do mm-hmm. I think it's something you should take right after you get your second COVID vaccine shot? Maybe not. No. No, it's that's it's hitting me very wrong. I was already pretty sweaty and not feeling great and this is really up in the ante. So uh well let's I guess we'll use one of their then. exits. Uh Tyler, let's go uh drink this dizziness off. That's a bad sentence. And look at that. It just works. We're popped out it here in the Candle Hearth Hall. I I loved the edge of nowhere. I think it's a moody, like fantasy world space for you. Mm-hmm. Like it's a great home. Like Sure, it's not cozy, but it definitely fits that Apocrypha theme. My goodness. Oh, and look, the sky maintained the Apocrypha feel. That'll probably fade in the coming hours here, but it's it's thematic as we exit this episode and let you know that if you'd like to suggest a mod for future episodes, you can do so on Twitter. I will be at Lurking Lion. I will be at Subtly Cool. You can check us out at Shapeless Media on Twitter. However, the best place to leave your mod suggestions is going to be the comments of this video or a Skyrim video, not a podcast video. Not a podcast or, episode. Yeah, don't don't leave them on podcast episodes. We'll get very mad. Mm-hmm. I'll strike you. Or you can leave them in our Discord on the specific channel that is Mod Suggestions. And while you're over there, you can check out our other channels where you can leave podcast suggestions. You can leave really anything, or you can just chit chat. How about you chit chat? Have a a nice little talk with us. So yeah, hop over to the discord, check out baseless claims. And I guess uh, I'll just see you next week and hope that I don't feel so shitty. I mean, you'll be fine and you'll be invincible, which is a nice true. I'll just be able to go out and start licking any old thing on the street. I like. Oh, yeah. I've already been doing it. And let me tell you, it's disgusting, but it's freeing. I feel free. I've been told my seat is magical, too.